for taking time out of your Saturday to just visit with us for a little bit. It just has meant so much to us to be able to um, just interact with you guys and get to know you a little bit. Um, so I'm going to be sitting on the other side of the table and I'll be, you know, kind of letting them in on some of your questions and comments. And I know they have some things they wanted to share with you guys today too. Um, so we may not be able to get to all your questions and comments, but Hopefully, if I can figure this thing out, it won't be our last one. And again, we just thank you for being here. Yes, So welcome, do. welcome. Yes, absolutely welcome. I mean, I can't even believe we're, we're doing this because I was telling Emmy Jo that back in the day we were having two-inch tape machines and the machines were breaking down every five minutes. And now we're doing this on a telephone, on a phone. So I, I'm just amazed. Well, I'm, I'm just thrilled because when Joanna first mentioned that she wanted to do this live thing, I was so excited because we wanted to thank you. I honestly, I hope I don't tear up, but I don't have the words to tell you what it has meant to read your comments and to see that our show meant so much to you. And for some of you, it helped you through a very difficult time in your life and the emotion that I feel when I look at the comments that I try to look at every single one and I, I think I, I think I do, but what I feel is just love. I feel like, I don't feel like fans. I feel like we're a family and I have this overwhelming desire to have coffee with you. <laughs> and find out what you have been doing over the last 50 years. So you're all a great blessing to us and I just wanna say thank you. Well, I, I can tell you that when I created the show back in 1970, I had no idea it was gonna be popular, that people would react to it the way they have and still remember it. And as Emmy Jo said, it's been so meaningful to know that this had an impact that this actually changed some lives and was a comfort to to people and comfort to you and so i i just want to thank you too i really do yes and uh i just you know when, when we first did the show we were newlyweds we didn't yeah. know anything <laughs> and we always loved children and we loved going out and meeting you when you were little and uh but we never ever thought about it actually having a deep meaning in your life. And so just know that you have friends here, Doug and Amy Joe, and we love you. Yeah. And we're, we're still here. And uh, we're, we just want you to, you know, introduce the show maybe to your kids or grandkids and, and maybe it'll have the same impact on them. And that, that's what we're really uh, praying for because we, we want to be a force for good out there. That's you know, there's for sure. so much craziness going on now, but I, I just feel that, you know, we can make an impact again. Yeah. And I, I hope we can. I do too. And you know, one of the things that meant so much to me is Joanna, who's always doing interesting things, put up some snapshots of when we did a personal appearance at my mother's school. And I was very, very close to my mother. And three students from her school have um, made, put comments up about how wonderful it was to meet us and that they loved my mother so much and that instead of doing work in the classroom, she always showed news and review. <laughs> I thought that was great. So uh, thank you. And I, I just remember uh, going on tour with me and Freddie and we would go to shopping centers and uh, all over the country. And I just loved getting out and performing for you, for the kids. <laughs> and it was, just, you know, I still have that, a pre-recorded show because 
I couldn't take the voice of Freddie with me. I had to take just the dancer, and we we pre-recorded the his lines, and uh, I sang live with my guitar, and so it was it was fun <laughs> though to just just have fun to really do a live show instead of on tape. Yeah. Well, we have we have one question that's come up a couple times. Yeah. Okay. So, y'all, if you can't hear me that great, that's okay because it's not about <laughs> me. And um, I am on the other side of the camera. But how did you come up with the name Newsy Review? Like, what was your inspiration, and why would why'd you call it that? Well, I can tell you, I, I, I was going to college at the time, and had this opportunity to create a kids show, and uh, just one night. Uh, inspiration just hit and said, you know, I thought, wait a minute, we need to do a review. And that's why it's spelled R-E-V-U-E -E instead of the other way, because it was going to be, you know, a top hat and just a fun kind of <laughs> review with animals. Muzu review. And so I thought, oh, that's a catchy name. And I sat down and wrote the theme song that very night and uh, played it for Emmy Joe and said, what do you think of this? And, and I she, liked it. She liked it. So that's that's really how, uh, you know, inspiration just comes. I'm sure you guys have experienced that too. But uh, I was so thankful for that because, you know, when you're sitting in your bedroom with your guitar and you're thinking, is this any good? <laughs> and then, you know, 50 years later, people still remember the song. And I got to tell you, they either love it or they don't like it because <laughs> it just kind of, uh, is memorable. Let's put it that way. Okay, so Chris, yeah. Chris just Chris. Okay, hi Chris. He's saying, did you write the theme song? What? Chris is asking, did you actually write the theme song? Oh yeah, yeah. No, I composed all the music. Oh, he for... wrote. He wrote over six hundred songs for New Zoo Review. He wrote every single one of them. Yeah, every every show had three songs in it, and uh, I wrote the music and lyrics for each song, and the music and lyrics for the theme song, and so. And I was right there to watch him do it, by golly, because <laughs> <laughs> I guess I married the right guy at the right time because we were engaged at the time that he was creating all of this. And it was really fun to see the evolution of New Zoo Review because, you know, in the very beginning, it wasn't Doug and Emmy Joe. It was Mr. Xenophany Zoo. Remember? Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. But anyway, it's a good thing. That I came up with this because she went ahead and married me. So that's, you got to, you know, you got to love that. That was a good decision. <laughs> okay, so well, that's awesome. That's awesome, and that actually um, brings me to my next question. And Ron just asked, "How did you two meet?" Oh, <laughs> well, okay. Right. Um, I had gone out to California to Santa Maria to. Um, do summer stock. I, I was had two leads and a couple of plays there for the summer. And um, I would go into the music building and rehearse my lines and I would hear music. And I kind of explored and I looked in the room and here was this good looking guy and he was playing his songs. And I would go in there and sit and listen to his songs. I just thought they were wonderful. But they, I weren't, they weren't kids' songs. No, they were say his adult, <laughs> his, his, yeah, his grown-up songs. But anyway, and then I found out that he was getting up at 5 in the morning every day and going out and playing basketball. And I, that's, I have a passion for basketball. That's, that's kind of what did it. Because I never thought I would marry anybody in show business. But when I found out <laughs> that he was also an athlete, and our, my family is all very athletic and loves sports and everything. It kind of was love at first sight. And we were married a year and a half later. Yeah, it was, it was fun you know, and doing summer stock because uh, you, you got to do all kinds of uh, things for the theater. You were in the costume department or you were on stage. Uh, I was doing uh, background music for the, for the plays and it was just really a cool time. And uh, remember, this was like 69, 70, nine, you know, and uh, so it was back then the whole world was changing. Mm -hmm. And so we just uh, we just had a good time. And, and like Emily says, we just fell in love. That's how we met. I love that. I love that. 
<laughs> I love hearing it. I've heard it so many times and I love hearing it. And so uh, there was another, actually a couple people have this question. Yeah. And it's Gavin and Eric, um, both in, they just asked it different ways, but uh -huh. where was the show taped? Okay. Like where, you know. Well, it is interesting because um, the first season we taped it at Desi Lu Studios. And this was, this was the actual studio where uh, Lucy and Desi Arnaz shot I Love Lucy, and they had their own studio there in Hollywood, and that's where the set was first built, and when we did our, our first season. And then we moved to the Burbank Studios, which is now Warner Brothers, and we were on stage one right, uh, right there in uh, Burbank. That's where we did uh, the mm -hmm. rest of the seasons. Yeah. Now, in the interim, I think we had one other soundstage, uh, Studio General, I think. But, but basically, the rest of the shows were at uh, the Burbank Studios. Okay, that's so, that's so great. And y'all were, you lived fairly close, so it wasn't too far, or was the traffic bad then? No, well, we were, we were in the Woodland Hills. And it was very exciting, I might add that. There was no traffic, because we had to be on the set at yeah. 5 a.m., to and get neither one makeup. Of, right, yeah. and neither one of us had any experience in television. Both of us, our backgrounds were in theater, right. and so there was just a lot to learn. And and uh, there there was because uh, you know on stage you're always told to emote because and say your lines loudly because you've got to reach the back of the theater. Yeah. But on TV and in movies, you have to let the camera do the work, and so any expressions that you give has to be a little more subtle. So we kind of got used to doing that, for sure. Okay, that's, um, so, okay, so this is good. I really like this question. Yeah. Um, because I know you, uh, obviously, as dad. Yes. And um, what a creative genius you are. Oh, and so you. John Davis, since we were talking about you writing the theme, the theme song, is yeah. asking about, he's heard a couple of your current songs. Oh, and he's wondering uh, about that. Is there any other music out there? Well, uh, you know, like any composer, I just can't stop composing. I mean, I can't stop writing because it just is in me. And uh, even back before New Zoo, uh, I had a rock and roll band. I, I was uh, uh, in a band called The Days In Between. You know, back in the 70s, that was kind of how you spelled days was up to you. But um, we, I, I've been composing all my life, mm -hmm. and there is a, a new album out there on Spat Spotify and, and uh, iTunes, and also I, I do a lot of Christian songs and music that I'm really proud of. And uh, if, if you go to iTunes or uh, Spotify and look up Doug Momery, you'll, you'll hear some of those songs. Mm -hmm. Actually, we have a new one coming out. I don't know if it's released yet, but it's... Um, Songs from the New Zoo Review, Volume 1. Uh, I'm just praying that it gets out there in the next couple of weeks. So be looking for that. Yeah, there was a question about that. Ah. About whether the New Zoo albums were going to be on iTunes or Spotify. And I was going to let you speak to that, too. I, is there a name? Did you check and see if they're... Uh, it's not uh, out yet, but it's ready to be released. Oh, yeah. So okay. be looking for it. I didn't know what the status was you know, on that one. Um, so I know you had come prepared to talk about a couple things too. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know if you want to do that now and just come, you know, a couple of comments that touched you that have touched you over the last, cause we've been doing this almost two, about almost two months, about two months. Well, uh, we've had so many amazing mm -hmm. stories come in that I know that, you know, yeah. meant a lot to you. And that. think about that two months and we have all this reaction, you know, well, this, I, I just, wrote out two or three that had, that really, you know, some of these comments, I really would tear up because they touched me so deeply. <clears throat> My family fell apart, <coughs> excuse me. My family fell apart when I was six. Watching New Zoo Review each morning was my happy place. My memories of the show are bittersweet because of the chaos around me at the time but the respite it brought me probably saved me emotionally. And it, that's just amazing. I, I'm so thankful. And I just pray that your 
the years since have been good ones. And um, yeah, I, I, here's another one that, that I thought there were just so many I could have I could have brought all comments, oh, but was, I just brought three or four. You were writing all night last yeah. night. Yeah, I used to watch Newsu Review when I was a kid. It not only taught me how to share love and be friendly towards other people, it also taught me that everyone is different in their own way and that we live in a diverse universe. And I thank you for that. That's great. And then somebody else wrote that watching our show helped him learn English down in Nuevo Laredo. So it's, it's, it's very, very gratifying. Yeah, the the impact uh, is so different on so many people. I mean, I've, I've had people uh, that said, you know, Charlie the L inspired me to be a marine biologist. Yeah. And I'm, this is when I was out touring with the, uh, with Freddie. And, you know, and, and also later on when I, I've, I've had a production company and people would recognize me when I would go out and direct uh, commercials. And uh, they would, I, I would go out and say, you know, you inspired me to do this, or you inspired me to do that. And it was just amazing. And, and some of so you wrote in and talked about how you were bullied. And bullying, oh, yeah. oh, that's awful. And that watching our show gave you courage and comfort when you knew you were going to have to go right back to school and be, be bullied. So, And, you know, all these things are even more intense now with the advent of social media. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just I think our show is needed now maybe more than ever. And, you know, on a lighter note, somebody wrote it. <laughs> that they loved Henrietta's house and they used to wish that they could go visit Henrietta. And the funny thing is, is that's exactly what I felt <laughs> doing the show. I loved Henrietta. I loved doing scenes in her house because it was so cozy and I thought it was really cute and you just felt like there was always something in the oven. And so she was just, Henrietta was wonderful. Just well, a real Southern belle. You, you know, that, that brings to mind when, when Emmy Jo and I were actually doing the show on stage. I mean, those characters were real to yeah, us. They felt I mean, real. They, you know, they were, I, for, <laughs> I would forget that there's a, wait a minute, there's a dancer inside that costume that's sweating <laughs> and tired. And I would be like, hey, Freddie, let's, uh, let's go over by your pond. It's true. <laughs> I know that sounds really weird, but we spent so much time with them yeah. that they became like our friends. <laughs> <laughs> but really, the dancers inside were so talented. Oh, my and goodness. And we would all just enjoy each other and have coffee and breakfast and just laugh. We were honored. We felt honored. Yeah. Not coming from a Hollywood background yeah. to be working with them because, for example, uh, Larry, who was in, Larry, Larry uh, was Thomas, in yeah. was in the Henrietta costume, was one of the greatest dancers in Hollywood, and it was such an honor for me to be on the same set as Larry, and I learned a lot from her. And little Sharon Baird, who was in the Charlie the Owl costume, I was such an, a fan of hers because she was one of the original Musketeers. And when I was little, I guess Sharon and I are about the same age, She, um, I watched Sharon on the Mickey Mouse Club and just thought she was the best. So when I found out that we were going to be working with her on New Zoo, I was a little intimidated at first because she would had a lot more TV experience than I had. But um, she was just wonderful. Well, all the dancers and the voiceover talent were incredible. Yes. Um, we just were really blessed to be working with with guys that uh, really taught us. And you're absolutely right about that. Okay, so this is I have I, this is something that I know people want. Like, sure, I've seen a couple questions. Um, I see Jeff's co Jeff's comment right now, and I know there was a question earlier, and I'm sorry I missed the name, but they want to know about that elevator. Like, did it actually work? And I know that we have found just going through you know, the, your the storage, yeah. these boxes, we found those original blueprints and I had no idea the, the what went into the set. So who designed the set? And 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 was it, how did that come about? And did it actually work, the elevator? <laughs> well, I, 
I actually concept, conceptualized the set and did a rough sketch of it and gave it to some very talented uh, architects, actually, and guys that made bl actual blueprints, because they it was actually a physical set that they built, and that elevator was very important to me. It had to work. It had to be safe by Hollywood standards, and which is quite quite a standard. And so, yes, the elevator worked, and it, it was uh, on a pneumatic uh, pulley system that was electronically controlled. You know, on off. So, but we were very careful because we had people in costumes and we had Emmy, Joe, and I going up and down. Now, the only one that couldn't fit was Henrietta. Yeah. I, so, well. but, but we did have a show where <laughs> somehow magically Henrietta got up into Fred, uh, Charlie's lab. Uh, we just don't know how that actually happened. But yeah, the elevator worked. And I Eric, wish, Eric wish we... was the one that asked. Thank you, Eric, for okay. coming back in. Yeah, I can't keep up with all the comments as, as much as I'd like to, but it's Eric that asked that question, so I'm glad he has the yeah. question answered. Um, and then there's lots of questions, too, um, yeah. just continuing on about do, do you still have your boots? I feel like we need to ask this question. I know people want to know about the boots. No, I do not have them. I don't know where they are. But I have two granddaughters who would like them. <laughs> and a daughter. <laughs> and, and, and my, well, you know, so, I, I'm always telling Emmy Joe, why don't you go buy some yeah. boots? Buy, buy the, you know, because they're back in style now. Yeah, who knew it. those boots would be so famous? <laughs> yeah. Well, we have about three minutes okay. left today. And, um, yeah. you know, y'all, thank you so much for coming. Um, to this, and I didn't know if there's anything else that you want to add or. Um... Well, I I just hope that uh, you guys will continue to follow us on Facebook and and uh, keep up with us. We'd like to keep up with you, and uh, we've got a lot of great things planned, and we just want you to, uh, you know, keep keep enjoying it, and uh, maybe we can do this again and uh, have even more people join mm -hmm. us. Yeah, because we just. Heaven, gosh, this has just been so much fun. And if we can do it again, if we can figure out some way to have some live visits, I would like that. Because, uh, gosh, I'd like to give you a hug and tell you that we're very appreciative I, I of will all say, your kind I will comments. Say, and I, I will say that I, I hope the next time we do this, I'm going to have Freddie the Frog right here over my shoulder giving a big wave to you guys. Okay? <laughs> I think that's pretty awesome. And then also, I do want to, I, I have one more thing. Yeah. Uh, let's see if there's any other questions um, before we go. Let me see. We have so many people that are saying uh, so many awesome things. I appreciate um, that. Yeah. Deidre said, amazing. Love you both so much. Thank Ooh. you for being there during my childhood. Oh. See, I want to hug you. <laughs> I want to tell you that I love you too. Wayne just said, this is so awesome. Thank you for taking the time for us. Oh, that's so cool. Um, and uh, Kara said, love to you both. Oh. Um, Eric, thank you. More coffee with Newsy with you would be epic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they want to know, we we'll probably don't have time to talk about the costumes this time. Oh, next time. That's a big question is yeah. where are the costumes. Next time. So we will tuck that away for the next time. Yeah. And um Nick says, thank you for all the memories. Tony said, thank you for um, for both taking the time. Lots of fun memories. I mean, they just, it's oh, been so wonderful to get to know oh, that's this good. group of people and this community that we've built. Well, so, yeah. The and we have is, built a community. Yeah. And a like family. I said it's earlier, a it, it's the New Zoo family. And I just, it's springtime. I, I just pray that this these next few weeks and the next months will be wonderful for you and for your family and just know that um, we love you yeah thanks okay y'all bye 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 thanks for coming everyone